My book, The Regularity Analysis of Causation, presents viable answers to the following two questions. What is it for one event to cause another event? And how do we know what causes what? Recently, there has been a spike in sales of this book, which, I believe, indicates a growing awareness on the part of the public of the significance of philosophical questions, and also of the failure of academicians to answer such questions. This sales spike is also due, in no small measure, to the superb narration job done by Samuel Unger. Get the complete audiobook for yourself at audible.com. A membership to Audible is free, and every member gets a free audiobook as a reward for joining. Audible is the world's leading distributor of audiobooks. No other distributor can match its quality or its selection. If there is a book that you would like made into an audio but cannot find, please let me know, and I will find a narrator for you. I work with a number of talented narrators, such as Samuel Unger, who can do the projects other voiceover artists cannot. So reach out, and in the meantime, enjoy the following promotional excerpt from my book, The Regularity Analysis of Causation, professionally narrated by Samuel Unger, and available at audible.com. How we know what causes what. According to Hume, we know that E causes E star because 1. E immediately precedes and is adjacent with E star, and 2. E similar events always immediately precede adjacent E star similar events. But this is not, at least not in general, how we learn what causes what. If it is known that, apart from being struck by ball A, hitherto stationary ball B was in a state of equilibrium, then it is known that the collision was necessarily the cause of the change in B's state of motion. But can it ever be known, it will be asked, that a given thing is in equilibrium in every respect but one? It can be known that, in every respect but one, a given thing is in a state that is sufficiently equilibrium-like that there was but one possible cause of some change subsequently undergone by that thing. If it is known that, apart from the nasty remark I just made about your cooking, you are in a state of relative psychological equilibrium, then, even though most people whose cooking is insulted don't go into a fit of rage, I know that your outburst was indeed the effect of my remark. Thus, if we know that E is the cause of E star, it isn't necessarily because we have observed some regularity of which that event sequence, E followed by E star, is an instance. In many cases, there is no such regularity. For example, the just discussed tantrum. And in many cases where there is such a regularity, it isn't on the basis of our knowledge of that regularity that we know E to be the cause of E star. For example, the situation. A child touches a hot stove and feels excruciating pain. He knows on that basis alone that touching a hot stove will lead to excruciating pain. He knows this because he knows that, apart from the fact that he was touching the stove, there was nothing distinctive about his situation. It is true that, whenever people touch hot stoves, they feel excruciating pain. So there is, in this case, a regularity of which the event sequence in question is an instance, but it isn't on the basis of this child's knowledge of such a regularity that he knows what caused his pain. <laughs> 